ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Amaj Al Knowles with your ZNS Total Sports. Well, after a week of heated debate, the country's sports minister finally answering to calls after much was made last week by members of different local sporting bodies, who accused the Honorable Anisha role of breaking protocol on several occasions most recent time coming during the minister's time with the 2019 International Association of Athletic Federations World Relays, where she went as a guest of the IAAF of the consent of the Bahamas Olympic Committee. Minister Roll addressed the matter during a contribution in the House of Assembly. I am pleased to report that along with the director of sports in the country's representative, Pauline Davis Thompson, to the representative of the country for the IAAF, a very productive meeting was held that extend to the extent of maintaining an open door and amicable relationship with the government of the Bahamas and that international sporting agency. Mr. Speaker, only the government's messenger can deliver such message. Mr. Speaker, it's only reasonable. And Mr. Speaker, as it relates to sports, it is my honor and it is my privilege to serve as that messenger. According to officials, there was also a breakdown in communication between the BOC member federations and the ministry, something the minister says she plans to fix in the interim. We will continue to foster relationship and open lines of communication with all sporting entities as the government sees fit in the best interest of the people of the Bahamas. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to entertaining a courtesy call by the Bahamas Olympic Committee scheduled for the 1st of July 2019 which would be my first meeting with the executives of that body. Of note, I am pleased to report that upon assuming, assuming office as the Minister of Sports, a general introductory meeting was held with all federations in the month of October 2018 at the Hilton Hotel. And thereafter, my office has honored numerous requests for courtesy calls by individual federations as we continue to build strong relationships in the interest of the development of sports. In basketball news, there's a new president of the New Providence Basketball Association after a tumultuous month-long election process. We saw several stalemates and hours of delay. James Price emerged victorious and will lead the basketball body into the 2019-2020 season, and he plans to hit the ground running. He had a challenge at first going off, but it wake up. You know, just thank God it wake up, and we got to get waking so we could put NPBA back to the standard it need to be in this country. That being said. Well, first thing, first, players, the referee, the coaches got to be on one accord. We had plenty challenges with the referees and players, so we need to sort that out first. In order to have a good house, you got to have peace inside the house. It's a good feeling. I think that um, with the president, Price, um, he has a very good plan of a vision for basketball and um, we'll see that we it comes to um, he's gonna work hard we're gonna work hard with him and prepare um, one of the things I know he wants to do is a lot of the young guys in division two want to see if they could you know get them scholarship because they're still young you know 1920 so they have still have opportunity to go to school but just continue to grow the, the, the game of basketball um, you, know, you hear um, a lot of these players could, could play at the national level and national teams, so it's, it's a good feeling. The country's junior track and field nationals is expected to take place this weekend. The B3A's President Jamico Archer is expecting an exciting event. Expectations are always very high. I expect that um, you'll see similar faces as you would have seen at the Carifa Games. What you should expect, though, is that a higher level of competition is on the way. Uh, for the under-18 and under-23 division at NACAC. Uh, obviously, it's a level beyond the region. It really focuses on the North and Central American region as well as the, uh, the Caribbean. And so I'm looking for an elevated level of competition. I think we will do reasonably well. Uh, the caliber of athletes that we have, we know who the standouts are and we know who will do very well. So I'm expecting the same returns from a Jada Knowles. I'm expecting a similar return from um, um, Rico Moultrie. Uh, obviously, Terrence Jones will be there once again. And so this is going to be a really exciting weekend of, of, of events for us. 
Speaking of track, our athletes have been posting a clean slate over the past two years with no notable incidents of concern. Executive Director of the Violence Anti-Doping Commission, Petra Haven, tells us more. So our athletes have actually been very good with compliance in reference to um, registering with the Anti-Doping Commission, submitting their whereabouts, and actually um, submitting themselves to or subjecting themselves to testing. So we haven't had any issues or major issues over the last, um, I guess, I'll, I'll say two years. So our athletes are doing really, really well. And I can tell you that the Bahamas Anti-Doping Commission is extremely proud of them for doing this because um, we've worked tirelessly and effortlessly around the clock to ensure that our athletes have all of the information that they need and they understand the ramifications of not subject, subjecting themselves to testing or also submitting their whereabouts. And June is Ladies Golf Month and for the president of the Central Ladies Division of the Bahamas Golf Federation, growing the sport amongst local, local golfers is definitely on the top of their list. Ladies Division, what we have been doing is that we're trying to get our governance into perspective and once that's done then we will concentrate more on the um, game to have ladies participate. Um, and this is a segue again into this particular association or club. We are here to assist them, it's just to encourage women players to come out. So once the Central Ladies Division has um, under the Bahamas Golf Federation, once we get the governance in place and um, a lot of administrative issues, not issues, I should say housekeeping matters that we have to deal with. Once we get all of that in place, we, sh we will be able to assist associations and clubs like this even more. And this season will mark the 150th anniversary of college football. And kicking off the college football bowl season will be none other than our very own Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl. Absolutely. We're getting ready to celebrate our sixth Bahamas Bowl on December 20th. And it's going to be an exciting time for, for all that are coming. Uh, it's been a, a real work in progress to continue to grow the event. Uh, the good news is that uh, we've got six successful years uh, on, the, on the docket and we've got an extension for an additional six year term. So this is going to be a staple on the Bahamian sports calendar for through 2025. So it's an exciting time. Uh, all of our key stakeholders uh, are back with us. Uh, everybody sees that this has been a great value exchange for, uh, for those participants, for the community and and uh, we're excited to continue to offer uh, uh, the college football scene in the Bahamas. And that's been a look at sports. A quick check on weather is up next. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center.